and so necessary. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, I wanted to ask you to turn to Matthew chapter 17, mm -hmm. verse 14 to uh, 21. Matthew 17, 14 to 21, I'll read. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they couldn't cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured that very hour. Amen. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, If he have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasted. Mm. Praise God. And so, mm. as we see, and you know, this scripture uh, just bring, bring, bring to light um, the, the, the importance of fasting. Because sometimes we're praying and praying for years for certain things and mm. for breakthrough and deliverance, and it just doesn't come. Mm. But Jesus is saying, you gotta, you gotta turn it up a notch. Mm. You gotta turn it up all the way. And um, the devil will come, but you you have you don't have to be afraid of the devil. Amen. You have prayer, you have fasting. If prayer is not working, turn it up. Go going, going to fasting. Amen. Going to fasting. Amen. Put away the food. Turn your plate upside down. Amen. And we're going to go through some scriptures, um, just outlining different examples of people in scripture who have fasted and different kinds of fasting, different lengths of fasting, and different purpose that their fast and serve based on the situation that they were in. You know, a lot of times it's because of circumstances why they had to fast, you mm -hmm. know, when, when situations get out of control. Mm -hmm. So we, we see Darius, king of Persia, when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, according to Daniel chapter 6, verse 18, you can write it down if you want and turn to it, um, you know, you can look it over when you get home. But this fasting was because, um, you know, Daniel was um, praying, you know, every day, you know, um, three times per day, and they didn't like it, and so um, they basically set him up where he would, um, the king, had the king sign a decree, and the king had to hold up to his word and throw Daniel in the den, according to what he had signed, and so even the king fasted for Daniel, wow. right? So Daniel wasn't in fasting, but the king fasted, the scripture says in Daniel chapter 6, verse 18, wow. It says that he fasted the whole night. Wow. And as a result of the king fasted. My and God. was he a believer? No. no. I don't think so. No, man. But God, that, that's the power of fasting. My goodness. That even, wow. even the demonic world fasts. Yeah. Wow. Even in the demonic world, the Muslims, all the demons, oh, they fast because yeah. they all know yeah. they are fasting. It, will have, it has the power no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. right? And so... Even I've heard so many seen videos online about demons um, or people fasting against mm -hmm. people's marriages mm -hmm. in the demonic world. Mm -hmm. Satanic people fasting against people's marriage, right? And so we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers. And as Christians, we cannot try to fight spiritual forces in the natural realm. We have yeah. to get in the spirit. Yeah. And fasting is the best way to do it. And this was just yeah. one night of prayer. And what did God do as a result of this one fasting? He closed up the mouth 
of yeah. the, the lion. Hallelujah. The lion didn't touch Daniel. Amen. Right? The lion did not touch Daniel. And so uh, we give God thanks for that. And we see Jonah. Jonah Amen. didn't intend to fast. According to Jonah chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, you know, Jonah was being disobedient. He was running away from his calling. Um, like, a lot of us do that, right? <laughs> like, I wanted to run today, right? But, <laughs> but um, Daniel was thrown into the, the fish's belly, and Daniel fasted by default. And as a result, when Daniel came out, because he was in the fish, the scripture tells us that he was praying while he was in the fish belly, yeah. and he wasn't eating. So he was by default fasting for three days, and then when Daniel came out, he was very humble, right? Because the scripture tells us that we should humble ourselves in prayer and fasting, and so fasting is a way of humbling ourselves for the Lord, Amen. and this is what happened to Jonah. Jonah end up in humility. Yes. Uh, he was very humble when he came back home. He was willing to do whatever God told him to do, right? And so sometimes I'm just praying that we will not harden our hearts to that point where yeah. God has to humble us. Yeah. It's, the Bible says we should humble ourselves. And so we want to get to that place where we're humble enough to see when we are getting too prideful or, you know, whatever the case is, that we humble ourselves. Because when God humbles us, it's much harder. <laughs> and so um, as a result, Jonah got his was delivered from the fish belly and, yes. you know, he went and he preached and, you know, many, he preached in the book. Mm -hmm. And we see Esther, in Esther chapter 4, oh, verse 16, yes. where Esther um, called a fast yes. with the Jewish people, mm -hmm. right? And this one was a three-day fast as well, but this one was a dry fast. Yes. Esther says, don't drink anything, don't eat anything. Um, I don't know how much time I have. Um, I could read the scriptures, but I could, yes, I don't know. Do you want me to read the scriptures? Yes. Okay, because I didn't want to keep it too long. But yeah, so in Esther chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Go, gather together all the Jews that, that are present in Shushan, and fast, fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, nor um, night or day. I also, and my maidens, will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Wow. So here we see Esther was not just fasting for, it was for an entire nation of people. And, and so, and we see Daniel did that as well. I'm going to be going into that as well. But, um, that this three-day dry fast is one that moves mountains. Like this is like adding like massive amounts of fuel to to to, to a fire. Wow. It just it, it moves mountains. Wow. This three-day dry fast wow. is difficult when you think about it. Going three days without food or water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's the Holy Spirit that has to lead you. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. And there are certain times in your life when you wake up, you may go to bed and you have a dream mm -hmm. that is unfavorable, that's, mm -hmm. that's a terrible nightmare. Mm -hmm. And it could be God showing you of things to come, mm -hmm. or it could be the devil trying to attack you in your dream. Mm -hmm. But I feel like God always prepares. Amen. And when you wake up from some of these dreams, you have to go into a three-day dry fast to break uh, to yeah. break whatever the enemy is planning. Mm -hmm. Because some of these things are time release curses, and it's only a matter of time. If you don't do anything about it, mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time. So not because you see a dream that's bad. It doesn't mean you have to just sit and accept it. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to yes. accept it. That's right. Because death, God said he came that he might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. It's, it's, it's about, you know, dying, premature death. Mm -hmm. You know that you haven't fulfilled your purpose. You're not going to accept that the devil is going to try to kill you. No. You rebuke it. Yes. And so this fast will break that spirit of death, that wow. curse from off your life. Amen. And I've experienced this before, where I thought this three-day dry fast was crazy. Because initially when I heard about it, I was like, I ain't doing that. You know, because I love my water too much, right? <laughs> but I remember I woke up one morning, 
Um, and the, I mean, I had a horrible dream. It was so terrible. I was like, God. And in your spirit, you know, right? Yeah. In your spirit, your spirit is just, your spirit man is just so uncomfortable. You know, and you're, you're praying. But the minute I woke up, I knew, and I was at a hotel that, that, that at the time, and I was like, oh, because I was looking forward to the continental breakfast too, right? <laughs> okay. But when I had that dream, I said, Lord of Jesus, I will not. And I went into fasting by God's grace and the Holy Spirit gave me strength. Yes. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. How much the Holy Spirit strengthens you when you're in fasting. Yes. You see? Yes. Right? And so God would allow me to see that a year later, mm-hmm. had I not gone into that fasting mm-hmm. and prayer, that dream would have become a reality. Yes. My God. Right? So sometimes God show you. Yes. He show you what's coming and he show you at the end. So, um, I'm saying these to encourage you. Amen. I'm saying these to encourage you because food, what is food? Food is not, our, our belly is not our God. Amen. Food is just, we don't eat to live. Yes. We just, we just eat to survive, but we don't, food is not our life. Amen. God is our life. Amen. And we cannot allow the natural things yes. to control us our eyes to control our actions. And so I just want to encourage you. Um, and as a result of this one, um, the Jewish people were, were saved. The Jewish people weren't, that's right, they weren't executed. And so um, we give God thanks for that. And then in Paul, in, in Acts chapter 9, verse 9, we see Paul um, by default again. <laughs> Um, so it says that, um, and he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Wow. So Paul was on fasting for three days when he lost his sight yeah. on the, the road to Damascus. Yeah. And um, you could understand, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who would want to eat when, they're, when they can't see? Yeah. <laughs> and it just hit you by surprise. You're like, oh my God, what happened, right? And so... Praise God, Paul um, regained his sight after the three days, and Paul went on to write in over 13 books in the New Testament, 13, and it's such a blessing to us today. Amen. Um, And so, and then we have David. Remember David, when David sinned with Bathsheba in, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 16 to 17, it tells us that David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. So I don't know if he was outside directly or inside his house on the ground. I don't know. But to me, it sounds like he was outside. Like mm-hmm. um, In scriptures, we see a lot of times where they talk about swap cloth and ash. Mm-hmm. Where they pour ashes on themselves and... Wow. To make you know people know that they're fasting, mm-hmm. and so I mean these are just extreme situations, right? Where desperate times call for desperate measures, you know. Yeah, right. And in verse seventeen it says, "And the elders of his house arose and went to him and um, raised him up from the earth, but he would not, neither eat he bread with them." And so in in later verses, it tells us that the child died anyways. So here David was fasting for the child to live, but the child didn't. Does that mean his fasting didn't work? No. God, God was teaching him a lesson, and God, not only did God, um, God gave him another child in a place of that, who is... King Solomon, that we talk, we hear about all the time, and so maybe that wasn't the promised child, right? Mm. So God had to move that one out of the way, and God brought another child, and so that was through praying fasting, because in later verses it tell us that he ate after seven days. After the child died, he ate. Yes. He ate, mm. and so he was fasting mm. there as well. Um, and we have Daniel. This is a good one. In Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verse um, 2 to 3, 
where Daniel, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine to my mouth. Neither did I appoint myself at all. Three days, three whole weeks, three whole weeks, yeah, mm -hmm. um, were fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And so if you're familiar with the story, I didn't want to read to you know, all the scripture. But anyways, with this story, Daniel, um, the scripture said that Daniel, from the first day he started to fast, the answer was released. Yes, the angel. Yes. Yes. But the answer to his prayer was held up in the heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. And the, to the point where the messenger angel, the Michael, the warring angel, had to go and fight yes. for the messenger angel to be released from mm -hmm. the prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. And so this is the power of, of, of prayer and fasting. And I know sometimes it's easy to, it might be easy to fast one day or two mm -hmm. days and three days. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point where we have to go beyond. Yes. We have yes. to stretch ourselves yes. you know, because of breakthrough doesn't come right away. Yes. You keep fasting and praying until the breakthrough comes. And so that's what Daniel did here. Wow. He kept fasting and kept fasting and praying. Yes. And his breakthrough came after 21 days. Wow. Yeah. 21 days. Yeah. How powerful is that? Amen. And even Michael said, you know, I, I have to go back and fight the, 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 um, the Prince of Persia. So I just want to encourage you you know, if, you, if you're fasting and it's not working, and you know, I remember one time I was fasting, I said, God, I'm going to fast for seven days. <laughs> you know, and I wasn't fasting, and you know, as I was um, praying, I was like, God, nothing, nothing changed. The situation was the same. And so I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then the image, the, the, the vision that God gave me, it's like a battlefield, when you're on the battlefield, and all of a sudden, you turn your back, and you walk, you're walking away from the battle. Mm -hmm. So I, I was scheduled to do a seven-day fast. I wanted to do a seven-day fast, but nothing great. The, 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 the fight wasn't over. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord told me, like, you have to go longer. You need to do, do wow. it longer. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Because you cannot turn your back and walk away in the middle yes. of the fight. Yeah. Yeah. you gotta, you got to stick it out. Mm -hmm. wow. you got to see it through to the end. So you have to stick it out until you get your breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And then alternatively, sometimes you might get your breakthrough before mm -hmm. the time that you would intend or the time that the Lord leads you to fast for. So, you know, God might say fast for seven days. But by day three, <laughs> you get your breakthrough, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay, I think, in those cases, if you just break your fast until <laughs> you get your breakthrough, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, God is good, and I just want to encourage you to, you know, put God to the test. Mm -hmm. See what he will do in your life. Mm -hmm. See what he will do in your life, because we cannot, um, as, as believers, we cannot be comfortable mm -hmm. in yeah. the position that we're in. We cannot be comfortable the way we are. Mm -hmm. There's always more to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are higher heights and deeper depths, and God wants intimacy with us more than anything else. So whatever whatever experience you have with the Lord, there is more to Him. And Amen. you know, Jehoshaphat. <laughs> you know, we, we we read in Second Chronicles twenty verse three, where it says, "And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, mm -hmm. and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea." He was supposed to go into battle, and he was fearful. But what happened? The fasting drives out fear. Yes. It drives out fear. It drives out all these things. And so what ended up happening in the end is because um, he was seeking deliverance from, you know, invading enemies. And God delivered them. God ended up delivering Judea from their enemies. And guess what? They didn't even have to fight. Where is it? In, in, in Second Chronicles 20. 20. Okay. Thank you. They didn't have to fight. Yes. The enemies end up fighting each other. Yes. Yeah. Confusion. Because they went into a fight. Yes. Wow. Yes. So that's what we need. We need our enemies that come up against us in the name of Jesus to fight fight each other. Amen. Amen. We don't need to come, come attacking us. We don't need yes. to run and hide. Fight each other in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right? Um, and, you know, I encourage you, even in, in major situations, in we're here we see Paul and Barnabas as well in 
Acts chapter 13, verse 3, before Paul went on his first missionary journey, yeah. he fasted and prayed. Mm -hmm. And they, it says, and when they had fasted mm -hmm. and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them out. Mm -hmm. so, so in any situation that you're facing, if you're going into a new career, mm -hmm. you're, you're taking trips or whatever new transition you're going into, fast about it. Amen. See what the Lord will do. Because yeah. perhaps the Lord will have you not go anymore. Mm -hmm. Or the fasting is asking him to, to guide your, your step. Mm -hmm. Make the, the path, Clear. you know, every crooked path um, straight. Amen. Right? Amen. And Paul also, they also fasted when they were going to appoint elders in the church, mm -hmm. which is very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Acts chapter 14, it says in verse 23, and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. So it's very good when the church go into fasting and prayer That's right. before appointing people because right. the Lord will speak. Amen. The yes. Lord will speak. Fasting is a way of just shutting down the world, shutting down all the noise. Amen. And your spiritual ears open. Your discernment is heightened. Um, your spiritual sense is heightened. You start to get visions. You start to have visions from the Lord clearer. You start to understand scripture better. And so um, that's another one. And Moses, Moses fasted twice. For 40 days, right? The first time he was just in Exodus chapter 34, verse 28, it says, And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it's through this time of Consecration, just spending time with God, that Moses um, received the Ten Commandments that we all live by today. Yeah. Who would have? Who would have thought? Yeah. Just forty days would have made such a big difference, even today. Generations, yeah. right? Exactly, generations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, remember when Moses went down from the mountain, um, the people were there worshiping the calf. Mm -hmm. And so Moses was so angry, he broke the tablets. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So Moses went back up mm -hmm. to the mountain for another 40 days. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and God, and don't break it the first time. <laughs> yes, in, Ex in, in Deuteronomy chapter 9, <laughs> verse 9, it tells us that, and when I was gone up, into the mount to receive the tablets of stone, even the tablets of the covenant which the Lord made with me. Then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights, neither did eat bread nor drink. So Moses did that twice, and then we got to now the last person I'm going to talk about is Jesus. Amen. Jesus did his time as well. Yeah. And with Jesus and even with Moses, I don't believe this was his first time fasting. I believe Jesus lived a life of fasting and prayer. Yeah. Man. Because the, the, this 40 day fast is not something you just go on suddenly like that. Yeah. You, you literally have to build your body up to it, mm -hmm. work your way up to it. And I believe that um, Jesus fasted many times before that, but this is the only time I see in scripture. There might be more that I missed, but. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. Mm -hmm. So Jesus did this, and then he started his public ministry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he started, because why? The power, yes. <laughs> you know, the anointing, the level of yeah. anointing that, that he had. Mm -hmm. But this one wasn't without temptation. Mm -hmm. 
The devil came to him and tried to kill him after his fasting. And the reason why I say that is because um, to break a fast, you can't just break your fast with any and everything. Yeah. You have to be specific. So the, the devil came to Jesus and said, oh, turn the stone into bread. And Jesus rebuked him. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. 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 And that's what we need to tell the devil when he comes to us when we're trying to fast, right? Mm -hmm. And he's tempting us with bread and these oh, yeah. things. I will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And just say it over and over. <laughs> say it over and over because if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. He will flee, but remember, he's going to come back again, right? He only leaves for a period, but he always comes back. We always come back. So just make sure you're always on your P's and Q's. Mm -hmm. And so the devil knew that the bread would have killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was just after him again, trying to kill him. Praise God. God. So um, the power, there's just so much power in, in fasting and prayer. Yeah. And it helps us. It, it, you know, fasting just really humbles us. Mm -hmm. Because there are times when you're fasting and you're like, my God. Yes. <laughs> help me Jesus help me you know you just have to fall on your knees mm -hmm. in prayer and you're like help me Jesus just yeah. cry out to him yeah. Lord you know because when you when you have a purpose for your fast when you have a need from God no matter how tempting the food looks mm -hmm. you just have to you yeah. just have to um, <laughs> keep walking right yeah. and then for, for us wives us women yeah. You're cooking your husband dinner at the same time if he's oh not in the fast and with you. You still have to feed your yeah. husband if the Lord, yeah. if, he, if it's not a group fast. <laughs> right. If you're not fasting together, you still have to cook your husband yeah. dinner. Yeah. You still have to cook, right? If you have children, you still have to feed them. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Right? Yeah. So the temptation yeah. is, is heavy. <laughs> So we have to get to that place where mentally you just turn off your mind and just like, I will not. Amen. Food is dead to me. Amen. <laughs> I have a question about that. Sure, go ahead. So what do you think about, like, what if you taste the food but then spit it out? The, yeah. Yeah. Would that, would that be breaking the fast? <laughs> um, I don't know, but I, I feel like it's probably okay. Yeah. Just because you're not swallowing it, you're not yeah. consuming yeah. it, it's not filling you up. Yeah. And even if you were to swallow it, it's a bad idea. Very bad idea. Because <laughs> it's just gonna open your appetite. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So do your very oh. best to just fit it up. It's just super taste. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so that's good, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I just pray the Lord, but like Holy Spirit leave my hand. That's it. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's right. 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 That's um, and also, like fasting, this scripture in Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 35 and verse 13, it says, But as for me, mm. when they were sick, my clothing was swapped out. Mm -hmm. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. So here, um, David was talking about his fasting and how how his fasting was. Praise God. Amen. And fasting on a whole, it just helps. If you find that you're struggling spiritually, mm -hmm. where you know when you're not where you used to be, right? You know when you're struggling. <laughs> so just fast. Amen. Fasting will go. 
Bring your mind so fast. Amen. It will snatch you right out of the hand of the devil. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And um, you also do fasting for deliverance as well. Amen. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, it says, How be it? That's the same scripture that I read before, the, the 20, 21st verse. Whenever there is demons attacking, or if you have, you need deliverance from whatever spirit. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Some of them will only come out through fasting yeah. and prayer. Yeah. Right? So you completely evict them. Um, and one example I remember, there was a man, um, he was married for almost 30 years. And he was telling me, my husband, he's a mutual friend, you know, my husband and his, um, we used to go to the same church, but he was telling me, you know, like, um, his marriage was struggling, and he was having these dreams about his wife, and then, so it would look like her, but then when he, when he turned, when she turned or something like that, two seconds later, it's, it's the image of an animal or something. Aww. And so I, and, and he knew that it was a spiritual attack on his marriage. Wow. And I told him, my God, and his wife wasn't interested in trying to work it out and all those things. And I said, you know, go into fasting and prayer. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're working, but do it on the weekend. Yes. Yeah. You know, try, start small, do a half a day, whatever. Try small, pray for your marriage, three days. And I told him and he didn't do it. I followed up with him later. He said, mm, I was busy. Yeah. But then his wife ended up left him, leaving him yeah. after almost 30 years. So sad. Break up his marriage after almost 30 years. So sad. And I believe that if he had really fasted yeah. and war yeah. for his marriage, that they would still be married. Wow. Oh my God. Because divorce is not God's will. No. It's the enemy at work. Yeah. So, and then alternatively, there's another story where there was a sister who I knew she was just hungry for God. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, you know, come, let, let's do a fasting together. Mm -hmm. And we fasted for seven days. And she, um, she was working at the time, but she said, mm -mm. she said, I, I, I had to call in for work. I took the whole month off. Wow. She took the whole month off. So she could fast because wow. I'm gonna go into it later <laughs> as to why. But um, she said she couldn't she couldn't manage the fasting and the and the, and, and work. Wow. And she was so desperate for God. Mm -hmm. wow. She took some time off. Praise God. They had to find a placement for her. Wow. And she went into fasting and prayer and she said, My God, Carla, she said I was saved for over twenty years. And she didn't know that there was such a thing. Because she said inside of her, she knew that there was more to God. Right. But she didn't know what it was. But she was only used to fasting until 6 p.m. Until oh, 6 p.m. Oh, yes. She would fast for a day and then break it at 6. Mm -hmm. And she said when she, she did the fast, everything changed. Mm -hmm. Everything changed. She had five children. She had five children and her husband. Mm -hmm. They were renting. Not that anything is wrong with renting. Yeah. But God moved mightily in that place. She said all sorts of demonic activities are starting to take place. The demons start to manifest. Yeah. In our house, all of a sudden, things where did you hear things moving by themselves? Yeah. And and then God ended up blessing them with their own home. Amen. Wow. for major life decisions. Mm. Yes. Whenever you have a, a major life decision to make, go yes. into fasting. Yes. Go into fasting. If you're going to get married, you're engaged, mm. and you're planning to get married, mm. fast and pray about it. That's right. You have to fast and pray because you don't want to end up marrying the wrong person, right? No, no. Fasting no. will expose these things. It will bring them to the surface. Yes. And so... I just want to encourage you with those words. And then I just want to do some do's and don'ts when you're fasting. Mm -hmm. Just some practical tips. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so when you're fasting, obviously you want to let the Lord lead you. Amen. Let the Lord lead you because he, if, if he's leading you into it, he will bring you through it. Yes. And just pray about it. Say, Lord, you know, I need to fast. I want to fast. Help me. Give me strength to yes. fast. Yes. Right? So that's first and foremost. Um, pray about it. And you want to start small. Mm -hmm. Work your way up to it. If you're used to fasting until 12, try to stretch it to 3 and then to 6. And if you're used to doing 3 days, try to go a bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, go 4 days or 7 days mm -hmm. and it's kind of and I, uh, Mississauga Church is having, having a class uh, coming up soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to be fasting October 5th, yeah. 6th and 7th, something like that. Yeah, so three days. Yeah, three days. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Three days. Yes. And three those days. Three days straight. Three days. Three days. Three days. It's just a weekend. Three days. Three days. It's just a weekend. It's just a weekend. So Mississauga Church will be fasting and they'll be shutting in together. Yeah. Man. You guys are so strong. Yeah. So I encourage you. I encourage you to, you know, join that fast. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really good when you have the support because there are times when you yes. want to quit and you're like, oh, but they're dependent on you. Yeah. You know, you don't want to disappoint your sister <laughs> or your brother. So join that fast um, and, and, and watch the Lord. Move and you know, make your own list. If you have other things that you want to pray about, you know, use them to help get the pull you to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and then I encourage you to, yeah, when you're fasting, just keep, you know, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to, to 18. It tells you, like, when you're fasting, mm. clean up yourself, mm. wash your face, yeah. clean. <laughs> yes. You know, don't let people know that you're fasting. Yeah. Like you like know, just try to look. Yeah. yeah, we're not trying to do. We don't want reward from men. We want yeah. our reward to come from God. Amen. So we want to do it in, in private, and we don't want to look like we're fasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if somebody asks you if you're fasting? Um, that's a hard one. You, so you just say, you're just say, I'm gonna eat later. No. Uh, later, they, they're it's not going to ask you when later. Yeah. Yes. They always want to get concerned. Like, are you really stressed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't want some fast with something that has to come in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not going to Lunch with them. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 But it's okay to tell them you're fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not to go over and, like, go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If they yeah. ask. Yeah, they ask. Yeah. 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 It's okay to tell them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know, right? You want more detail? Yeah. Or you, you can take it and say, oh, you know, I'll eat it later. Yes. And then go home and put it in the freezer, well, freezer or something. Right? Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? No, I've done that so many times. Yeah. I've had some good up meals and I've had stacks of leftovers in the freezer. <laughs> In Psalm 63, verse 1, um, David says, O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. So when you're just so hungry for God and thirsty, you're going to fast and in prayer and pray, pray early morning and to set the day in. I just encourage you throughout your fast, just pray, 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 pray. You're driving, yeah. pray. Mm -hmm. You're walking, pray. You're cooking, pray. Just, just maintain a spirit of prayer mm -hmm. so that um, the devil doesn't um, tempt you. Mm -hmm. right. And the time that you would use to prepare all these meals, if you're not 
cooking for other people. <laughs> use it to study your Bible. Amen. You know, use it to, to read the Word of God. Amen. And, you know, let the Lord lead you. Read it. Use read books on fasting. I have a wonderful book that um, I've been reading for years, and I use it as reference every so often. Uh, multiple books in this, but um, Atomic Habits. Um, yeah, or Atomic Power mm-hmm. through prayer and fasting, something like that. Like Frank, it's a it's an old book, mm-hmm. um, but it's a powerful book that gives so many testimonies of people who fasted and you know just the breakthrough. People who were too skinny, they were underweight, mm-hmm. through fast and they end up becoming normal weight. Wow. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <Yeah. but laughs> Your, your body, whatever was going on in your body, mm-hmm. the fast and just release all of those toxins, mm-hmm. all those things that was causing, you know, causing him not to be able to gain weight, mm-hmm. and he started to keep on the weight, wow. and he was able to maintain it. Atomic power with God through fasting and prayer, like Franklin. Yeah, you see it on Amazon. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Mm-hmm. So that one, and there are many other books on. on yeah, that one's a good one to start with. Um, and listen to, to messages on fasting and prayer. Just try to get your, your, your mind just focused in that place. You know, listen to messages, preaching, on any kind of preaching, you know. Um, and drink lots and lots of water. Yeah. Pastor David sent out that, that, that <laughs> text today. Yeah. yeah, you're going to need one of those bottles. Yeah. And you're going to need to be doing it three times or four times. Wow. Four of those per day. Yeah. You know, drink lots of water. Don't wait until you feel hungry. Just yeah. drink lots of water. Mm-hmm. And I also recommend warm or hot water as well. Mm-hmm. Because as you're fasting, you'll find that your body gets cold. Mm-hmm. Um, your temperature drops. And so the warm water will keep, try to maintain a normal body temperature and get lots of rest yeah. lots of rest if you can go to bed a bit earlier try to go to bed earlier and if you can take afternoon naps do it at least for the first if you're going to do an extended fast at least for the first little while just until your body releases all those toxins and things um, eventually you will get to a point where you have so much energy you have to rest. And um, the last thing for the do's is stay busy. Don't just sit there. You know, sometimes some people do that, right? They're like, I'm fasting, I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything. The house needs to clean. Clean it, it's okay. You know? <laughs> um, and so because you're not making all those meals, you'll have time to yeah. do those chores that you weren't able to get to mm-hmm. all along. So um, stay busy, <laughs> right? And then some of the don'ts, we've talked about some of them already, but basically don't advertise it to the world. You don't need to do that. Yeah. Just keep it between you and God. And um, I, rec- I don't recommend watching movies. Bad mm-hmm. idea. Get off social media. Mm-hmm. Bad idea. Yeah, it, it, it really kills your spirit. <laughs> You end up quitting your father, you're like, oh my god, that wasn't worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then, you know, some people are used to drinking like lemon water and stuff yeah. like that. Try to, try, try to stay away from, you know, sometimes people do like maybe a Daniel fast yeah. or like a juice fast yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Try not to drink lemon. Those things open your appetite more, right? Oh, no. The citrus things become too harsh for your, okay. your system. Um, so stay away from. And one of the things you might notice is that your breath is not as pleasant as normal. Oh, yeah. And you might be tempted to eat candy, right? Yeah. Stay away from the candy. Forget it. Just use mint. You know the string have those mint strips? Yeah. yeah. You can use those. Get, get a pack of mint strips. Yeah, they're so thin. That will just like, freshen your breath. Yeah, or sometimes I'll, I'll walk, you know, those Listerine, the little travel size Listerine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just carry one of those and rinse my mouth yeah. um, when I need to, and I'm good, you know. Mm-hmm. So just be mindful of those things. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who like to exercise, try not to exercise in your fast and it's not going to work. It's, it's too much, especially if it's vigorous exercise. It's just too much on the body, I think. 
to try to minimize, do light, light exercises. Exactly. If you're doing a long fast. Um, and just remember, if you're gonna break your fat, when you're gonna break your fast, you're gonna, you, you don't wanna eat bread. Don't let pizza tempt you. It's not, it's not good. Like, uh, yes. Because what happens is your, your system shuts, it, your system is shut, shut, shuts down centrally, right? Mm -hmm. Where it becomes like that of a baby, where you need to slowly rebuild your system mm -hmm. back into it, especially if you're doing an extended fast, mm -hmm. if it's more than seven days, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So you want to start off with, that's right, with vegetable soup, um, forages, um, vegetables, yogurt, those things, smoothies, yeah. So you want to keep, keep those things in mind and just work your way up. And you can do your own research, right? So I'm just whetting your appetite, but don't let this be the end all. <laughs> yeah, do your own research. Um, yeah, and you know, if you're doing your fasting and you end up um, falling into temptation, it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Give yourself some grace and start again tomorrow. Amen. Right? You don't have to be too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't recommend drinking high ice cold water when you're fasting, back to the temperature thing. Mm -hmm. So, and um, yeah, and don't wait until you're hungry to drink water. By then it might be too late. You're, you're, you're going to fall. <laughs> Keep drinking the water wait until you feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so for for those fasts that are beyond three days, um, you want to make sure that when you're waking up from your bed, you want to get up slowly. Mm -hmm. You don't want to rush because sometimes your head might feel dizzy. You know. You don't want to rush out of bed and end up fainting. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you want to raise from a seated position as well, um, slowly. Mm -hmm. Slowly. If you're sitting down for too long, just don't rush. Um, and th this book also recommends you to do like gentle exercise and do deep breathing exercises as well. And your bowel movement will be very infrequent. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just let it come when it comes. If it doesn't come, whatever. <laughs> you're, you're still good. God is moving. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like I said, you know, fasting gets easier with time. After, after 8 to 15 days, it gets easier. Mm -hmm. You get so much energy. And um, I just want to make one disclaimer that you should speak to your doctor before. <laughs> I'm just doing this because that's the thing I hear people doing. Just speak to your doctor before you're going to fast because there are people who are on medication. And, yeah. You know, fasting can help. Fasting does right. help get you off those meds. Oh, yeah. yeah. But if you don't have the faith to believe for it, mm -hmm. I can't help you. Right. You're going to have to find that small mustard seed faith to believe that if I do this fast, that I can do the fast without the medication. Right. Right. And if you can just push through, mm -hmm. at least with, you know, the first push through mm -hmm. for those few days, eventually you can get off those medications. Yeah. Yeah. And now God's will for you to be on these medications Amen. because they're damaging your system. Yeah. And then it goes from one med to the next, yes. and to the next med. Right. So speak to your doctor um, and, um, some of the physical challenges that you, you might experience, I spoke about some before with the dizziness. Mm -hmm. You might feel dizzy, you might feel faintish, sometimes fever, headache, vomiting, um, severe pain in your abdomen. You might feel that the abdomen is abdomen so pain, body. especially if you don't drink hot water. Right. You'll yeah. feel it, some of us call it gas. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel weak, um, short, short of breath. Mm -hmm. Some people might experience sleeplessness. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, sleeplessness, um, nervousness, foul breath. I mentioned that before. Runny nose, sneezing, backache, burning kidney, and side ache, vexation. You might find that you're more impatient 
Mm-hmm. Right. You might be upset. Oh. <laughs> you might be stuck in yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you find that you're losing your patience, just just take a break. <laughs> Wait. Call on the name of the Lord. <laughs> and it's it's normal. It's normal to experience these things. But I just want to let you know so that you can look out for them. Mm-hmm. And um, just you know, so that you, you know what to expect. And um, spiritually speaking, um, like I mentioned before about the, the demonic activity, you might ex- experience some weird things happening in your house. Mm-hmm. Like all of a sudden, your, your fridge stopped working. Mm-hmm. Or your microwave is acting weird. Or like the other day, <laughs> I was fasted. And my daughter, oh God is so good. My daughter, um, if the devil doesn't come after you, will come after your husband or your children. Yeah. So, <laughs> just the heads up, right? So my daughter was sleeping and um, she woke up crying, calling for her dad at like 6 o'clock. And she's like, I can't see, I can't see, my eyes can't open. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> I wasn't trying to get up anyways for the first call. And so I was like, okay, come, come, let's go in the bathroom. And, you know, we went in there and I prayed for her. And, I, you know, I was just like, you know, binding and everything. And I prayed for her healing. I'm like, yes. And I prayed till I could pray no more. I said, okay, go back to bed. <laughs> And she um she still couldn't open her eye. But I sent her back to bed and I said, by faith, I believe in <laughs> <laughs> that when you wake up in the morning, your eyes will be fine. Right? And she when she woke up in the morning, she was one eye open and the other one was still closed. I was like, it's okay, claim your healing. Yeah. Say thank you, Jesus, for my healing. Yeah. Believe God for your healing. Because I was like, I don't know what else to do. And I said, I'm not going to know doctor, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that talk crossed my mind, but I, I quickly rebuke it. I'm like, I have things to do, you know. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to neglect my child, yeah. but I, you know, you know when it's just the devil trying to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, she went about her business and she was just doing her thing. And I was in the kitchen and she was at the table, and I was like, oh my god! Suddenly, I realized that she was using her eyes, <laughs> eyes to see. I was like, oh my god! Thank you, Jesus. Right? And the, the weird thing, then this is how you know that it's just a, the enemy trying to attack, is when there's no signs or symptoms. There's no, there was no mucus being released from her eye. Her eye, there was no redness in her eye. It was just, her eyes were perfectly, they look fine. And I'm like, I know this was just the devil, but I, you know, the, the scripture said we should resist the devil. Yeah. And he will be yeah. yeah. But had I, had I entertained him, I'd be like, oh my God. I have to go and be running to the hospital, doing, you know, letting them, letting them tell me all sorts of foolishness, right? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Exactly, right? Yeah. That's right. The pain's not intense. Exactly. So I said, you know, and then God, praise God. God, God um, dealt with that situation. We give God glory. Yes, so I think that's it. Um, and we just, you know, through this prayer and fast, we just want to continue to take authority over our our lives. And in Isaiah chapter 58, it talks about the kind of fast that the Lord requires of us. And I want to go to verse 8, where it shows you the results of when you, you, you do the fast, the acceptable fast mm-hmm. that the Lord requires of us. Mm-hmm. It says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health mm-hmm. shall spring forth speedily, speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Verse 9. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw away thy soul to the hungry, and Satisfy the afflicted soul. 
Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. How powerful is that? Amen. How powerful is that? Amen. Amen. So there are many benefits to fasting and prayer, and even if you partner with someone, you know, partner with someone in fasting and prayer. And another thing too is praying and fasting for our our leaders, pastor yeah. David. Yeah. It is so important for us to fast and pray for him. Yeah. He he's under so much pressure. It's only God's grace that's keeping him. Yeah. And so you can fast and pray for someone else, just like how they did in Esther, yeah. you know, where they fast. The Jews fasted for Esther, and God gave the breakthrough. Fast for your leaders. Amen. You want to see them do well and, and for God to use them and for it's all about the soul. Yeah. There's a war for souls. Yeah. And you can only win if you pray and fast for them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In one fast? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Multiple yeah. things in one fast. Like if we're praying for pastor, we're praying for our family, yeah. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We could do we could dedicate the fast to multiple things. That's right. Okay. That's right. You can fast for multiple things. Yeah, for sure. Does anyone else have any questions? Wait a minute. Okay, so speaking of questions, I think you touched on like when you're fasting, you could like activity will decrease. Um, sometimes in the past when I've fasted, I'll see you do some eating again and you think, are those bad dreams? Uh, I'm not eating in real life, but mm -hmm. there's like food here. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, do I keep going? Or is this thing gone down the drain? Mm -hmm. Do I just cut off? Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes I think um, your dreams show you things to come, right? Right. Or things that, that's happening in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So it might be that the devil wants you to break your fast. By putting these foods, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll find that a lot when you're fasting. Mm -hmm. You're dreaming about food every day, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and so you want to make sure that you 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 pray against those dreams as well, mm -hmm. because a lot of the times in the demonic world they'll try to force food onto you in your dream, mm -hmm. and people end up going into covenants in right. their dreams unknowingly. Mm -hmm. They'll want you to come into covenant with them. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're in a dream, and usually they come as a familiar person, right? Mm -hmm. Like your mom, your dad, or whatever, and they're forcing you. They're, they're trying to feed you the food, and you, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if your spirit, and that's the thing, when you're fasting, mm -hmm. your spirit man is so alert oh, that yes. in your dream you'll recognize that it's the devil, and you'll rebuke it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's right there in the dream, yeah. right? And you wake up, and you have the victory. You know, you have the victory over that situation, but you're still free about it. When you wake up and you just continue your fasting. Because the devil will try in every which way to, to mm -hmm. get to you. If he can't get to you in, in the natural, mm -hmm. he'll try to get you to come in agreement with him and in contrast or whatever in the spirit realm. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Don't sign anything yeah. in your yeah. dreams. But you know what I mean? And I mean, yeah, so that's fasting helps you to be more spiritually alert. Yeah. It helps you to be more alert in your dreams. When you're 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 in that state. So just another thing, another question. So how do we get our spirit man built up strong enough where you can you resist the food? Where you can say no, I'm not signing anything. That's right. I've seen times in my life where this is why I first came to the Lord. All I would do was pray and fast. Mm -hmm. And I would see, yeah, you know, I guess maybe because I wasn't watching TV, I never had to turn on my TV in months. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, see, the demon running away, I was turned into like, in fear. So I guess my question in the natural or in the dream? Yeah. I was like, well, I just turned myself. How do we get our spirit man strengthened to the point where you can resist to these things in the dream? To the word and prayer. So you were so you were fasting and praying a lot then. Yeah, back then. You saw them running. Yeah, they were they were really running. They were running. So yeah. you just answered your own question. I think I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to my first word. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, know the answer. answer. You know the answer. <laughs> no. You know. Or TV. You know. You know. You know. First words. We have to go through. Mm -hmm. When I was at Spanish orientation, when I first came to Christ. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, like, in my dream, it started happening. Like, people were coming to mm -hmm. my dream. In my dream, I was saying no. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's strong. Yeah, it was strong, and I was saying no in the dream. Right. So, like, yeah, I, I can attest to that. Yes. Like, if you're fasting and praying, mm -hmm. and you're and you're reading the scripture and praying mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, the your spirit will grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and and that's the thing too, because that those are spirit spouses. Yeah. Right? So yeah. That's why I was on. Um, yeah. Make covenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and those those things are very dangerous. Because a lot of the times they exist. Yeah, a lot of the times they exist. Yeah, because those those spirit spouses, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> a lot of times they prevent people from getting married. That's right. right. A lot of people will find that they get so close and then it doesn't work yeah. out, or yeah. even sometimes what they'll do if you're married, they'll mash, they'll they'll break up your marriage, <laughs> father they'll break up. That's yeah. all right. Mash up. <laughs> so you don't want to entertain uh, entertain those things and mm -hmm. the reason why I say that is um, there's a pastor who was speaking about it once and he he said in his, in his service there was a lady who every time worship gets to a certain climax where it's really hot like you know service is just on fire the lady would leave the spirit causes us to get up right so, so then he said one Sunday he told them Told the ushers, don't let anybody in or out. Exactly. Close the door. And the lady was up at the front and she couldn't leave. And he was just watching her. Mm -hmm. And um, he saw like a snake in her eye. Oh my gosh. So at the end, he said, he went up to her after service. I don't mean to scare anyone, mm -hmm. no, 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 but no. this is just the reality yes. of, of our life. Yes. We, are, we are spirit yeah. beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just live in a body in this world. Mm -hmm. And so. He saw a snake in her eye, and he went to her and he says, "Do you know that you have a, a spirit spouse?" And mm -hmm. she says, "Yes, I know." Uh -huh. And he says, "Well, aren't you gonna try to get rid of?" He said, "No, uh -huh. because they show me a good time at night." Uh -oh. Oh, oh my god! Right? And so uh -huh. she didn't want to be delivered from it. Oh. And some people know. And then there was also another guy who would see the sign when you wake up. So it's happening in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But there was physical signs right. that he was, you know, body fluid, right? When he wake up in the morning on his bed. And so we cannot be ignorant of the devil's devices. That's right. Right? Same thing with That's right. So I think also, like, I would say for me it's like when I try and falter, it's like I get more revelation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because like, mm -hmm. it's like they keep saying, no, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Yeah. I can't do that. So it's like I get excited. I'm like, no, 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 you tell me today. Amen. It's this true. Best. It's true. And that's important, the important point that you make as well. Have a notebook, have a journal. Yeah, for sure. Have a journal handy to write down what the Lord is doing during your fast. Mm -hmm. Record it, you know, what, what happened day one, day two, you know. What the Lord show you, what the Lord teach you, what you learn from Scripture. Just journalize your experience because mm -hmm. it, it will be encouragement for you Amen. in your in your in the future mm -hmm. when you need it, or un encouragement for us. Mm -hmm. You know when you share your testimony for us, mm -hmm. for us too. Mm -hmm. So um, we just give God thanks for today, and mm -hmm. I hope that we can pray. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, so Sister Fatuma, are you going to pray? Because um, we can pray for everyone. Right? <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for your presence, O God. Thank you for teaching us, O God, how much to be closer to you by praying and fasting, O God. Hallelujah, O God. Put out your spirit, your fire, O God. Put out your grace upon our life, O God. So we will be close to you, O God. Hallelujah. There is victory, there is holiness, there is power in your presence, O God. In Jesus' name, O God. Glorify you, Son, in our life, O God. Open our spiritual eyes, O God, so we can see, O God. In Jesus' name, O God. All we need is you, O God. You alone, O God. Hallelujah. You are our fine Bobeka, the beginning and the end. There is none like you, Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider, O God. Hallelujah. You all what we need, O God. Hallelujah. You are our strength, O God. Hallelujah. You are our wisdom, O God. Hallelujah. You are our beauty, O God. You are our grace, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. 